Hi everyone, my name is Rob and in this episode of our Avram home, I'm going to be going into more detail about the steel roofing installation. If you didn't see our first video about the steel roofing installation, be sure to check that one out first, but let's dive into today's content. Okay, so the first thing I wanna be talking to you about is skylights. Uh, on our house, we have five skylights and I had to figure out how exactly do you transition your steel roofing into the skylight. And the first comment I wanna make is that since we purchased our house, uh, the specific skylight that Avram uh, sends with their kits has changed. And so the, uh, the look of ours and the profile of it has changed slightly, but there's a few details that I think will still be pertinent regardless of which one you use. Uh, the first thing is that whenever you have a sheet of steel that's coming up to the edge of the, the window um, and you wanna cut it, be sure to add an extra inch of steel material that you can then put a safety bend on. That's where you bend it back underneath the steel. And the reason for this is so that, it, I mean, A, it'll look better if there's a nice crisp bend, but B, when you cut the steel and expose the metal that isn't painted, it could be prone to rusting. And so you wanna make sure you protect that steel as much as possible from the elements. To that end, I would recommend, uh, if you don't own a brake, which I don't, uh, consider renting one or borrowing one from someone that has one. Um, I didn't have a break and I didn't uh, ask anyone to borrow one and so I found some other methods of doing it. Uh, the first one I tried was to actually just put your piece of steel on a wooden surface and use a mallet or hammer and just bend it over the edge of it and try to just like hit it down flat. Uh, that worked but it wasn't as easy as I found just using a pair of pliers and slowly but surely uh, putting a bend on that. Uh, you just want to make sure that you're not scratching the paint as you do that uh, because again you want to protect it from the elements as much as possible. So regardless of how you do those safety bends I want to encourage you do the safety bends make sure that you are covering up all of that steel and just be thinking about when you get to the skylight where's the water going to go? Uh, where's the ice going to when the ice melts where's the water that's ice where's it Where's it gonna go? You wanna make sure that you're eliminating any possibility for that water to make its way into your house. You wanna make sure that everything's tight, that it's fully connected, and that there's absolutely no way that that water can work its way into your home. The second thing I wanna talk about is what happens when you actually come up to a dormer wall on your house. Uh, and I'll show you. This is the sidewall flashing that goes up against the dormer wall. And what you wanna make sure is that when this sits on the roofing that it's able to get nice and flat and tight and then you're able to screw this really really tight so that water and ice and snow can't get between the steel and the sidewall flashing. Once this is installed on the wall or on the on the roof your siding then goes over top of this piece of steel so that any water can't get in behind it and it protects your roof line. The second part of the dormer flashing kit has to do with where the pitches change. On the, on the actual main part of the house, it's a 60 degree equilateral, equilateral triangle. I think it's a 2112 pitch. Uh, it's super, super steep. But when you come onto the dormer, our dormers are a seven degree pitch. And so it's almost a flat roof. And there's a piece of flashing that comes down and goes across. You wanna make sure that that piece of flashing goes underneath, underneath the part that goes all the way to the peak and it stays on top of the dormer roofing so that any water that comes down gets shed out and away. The third section that we're gonna talk about are the two gable ends. So on both of the far ends of your house where your steel roofing meets the very edge, same with the side wall, you wanna make sure that that piece of steel is not cut just square. You wanna make sure that you put a bend in it so that if any water gets in behind the piece of trim, it's all directed straight down to the very, very bottom of your roof line. Uh, but once you get that piece of steel on, you're gonna be installing the rake trim, and the rake trim looks like this. This part goes onto the outside edge, and this is the part that actually gets fastened onto your steel roofing itself. And so, uh, same with the sidewall flashing, just a series of screws holding this down to the roof, uh, screwed directly into the strapping, prevents any water from going over the edge. The fourth section I wanna to talk to you about is the ridge cap. The ridge cap is the part that goes on at the very, very peak of the house, you really want to make sure that your strapping goes all the way to the top. This is how high we had all of the steel or all of the strapping coming. Um, the, the actual peak of the of the trusses is like right here. So it was a little bit higher than the actual peak. Um, you can see down on the far side over here, there's a little bit of space at the top, but the, the corner of the strapping was basically flush with the top of the truss itself. 
And so we cut the steel to be flush. Well, the ridge cap being only six inches would have basically stopped right here, which would have not worked for here. And we wouldn't have been able to attach those rectangular pieces that fit between the ribs of the steel. And so that's why I've added these additional ones up here. Don't drop the camera, Rob. Which you can see when, when you look down here, by adding the four inches here and on this other side here too, I'll actually be able to bring the steel all the way up to the top here. There's still a gap here, so it's a vented airspace uh, that comes up the house wrap and out the top. We will now, after we attach the steel, we'll be able to put that rectangular piece along the edge of it here and attach the ridge cap on top of it. What I did for installing that ridge cap is after I had one entire side of the roof finished, I went along and installed these connecting pieces that go on to the very, very peak of the house. Uh, these go on, this one's been trimmed, it's just a scrap piece, but they go on between your ribs and get screwed down into the strapping. Your ridge cap then comes down on top and gets screwed into the top here, and that prevents rodents from getting into your house, but also allows the air to get vented out rather than trapping it inside underneath the ridge cap. And so after I had finished that one side of the roof and installed all of these pieces along that one side, when I started the second side, when I got to the top of each row of roofing, I made sure I installed these. And then I also started installing the ridge cap working from one end of the house all the way to the end. And I did it that way because the ladder that I have uh, would have scratched my roof and I didn't want to be scratching it. I also didn't want to sit on the ridge cap of this really tall house and slowly work my way backwards along that ridge cap and install it after all the roofing was done. And so that's how I chose to do it. You can choose to do it however you like, but slowly but surely you'll work your way along screwing the ridge cap down uh, to these connection pieces that are between each and every rib of your house. Well, that does it for today's video. Uh, I wanna thank you so much for watching it. And if you're uh, gonna be building your own Avram home, if you are, please be sure to like and subscribe uh, so that you get all the updates for our upcoming videos to show you the step-by-step -step process about how to put these kits together. Uh, but thank you so much for watching. Look forward to our next video. See you then.